Hello, TT Workshop here. Today, let's go through the process of using a DSLR or mirrorless camera as a virtual USB webcam on Windows 10 without the use of HDMI capture device and absolutely for free. In this video, I will explain how USB virtual webcam works, the pros and cons, and how to set it up with different camera brands. And of course, I will leave timestamps and chapter marks in the video description for you to navigate through if you're only interested in one particular brand for its setup. Please keep in mind that many of the software mentioned today are still in beta stage as they are emergency release from the developers or manufacturers to help people out during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thus, their performance, stability, and compatibility should get better in the future. Part 1. How it works. It is common for photographers to tether their camera to a computer via USB in studio. Many cameras would provide a medium quality live video feed through the USB connection to the computer for the photographer to frame the shot in studio setups. And this video feed through USB is the key for our project today. A virtual webcam software is basically a camera tether control software that captures the live view from the camera USB and removes the text and info overlay and emulates a webcam in your Windows system. Part 2. Pros and Cons Obviously, the number one pro for this method is that it's free. And in addition to that, you also may get the ability to control the exposure and the white balance settings remotely from the computer side if it's supported. Then speaking of cons, while the video quality is good enough for video conference calls, it does suffer from low frame rate and a limited resolution when the quality is really important for your application. Also note that USB virtual webcam utility cannot carry any audio signal by design to the computer. So you have to use an external microphone, something like this. Part 3. Canon. The Canon EOS webcam utility is a very simple and bare-bone system that actually works. In fact, you don't even launch it before use. After installation, the program runs in the background when you plug in your camera. Then, EOS webcam will show up as an available camera in video call software. I recommend using movie mode to get an image with 16x9 aspect ratio without black borders. Although I have to point out the price that comes with simplicity. No easy control. Once your Canon camera gets connected via USB in photo mode, it will enter PC remote mode and then become inoperable. Whenever you try to adjust settings, it will just report back as busy. In video mode, it is possible to change the settings, but you can only do so on the camera body. Another interesting thing is that although Canon only lists newer cameras such as the 7D Mark II, T7i, ADD, EOS R, those cameras as compatible with the new webcam utility beta, I did find it working totally fine with the T3i. So I would assume any Canon camera with USB connection and live video ability should work just fine with the EOS webcam utility, although your mileage may vary. The second option for Canon is Digicam Control. Digicam Control is an amazing free camera control software with a rich feature set. Its developer is very generous to introduce a standalone free software called the Digicam Control Virtual Webcam Beta, or in short, DCC Virtual Webcam. After installation, plug in your camera, launch the software, and click Start Live View. At this point, DCC Virtual Camera becomes an available webcam to you in video software. And I recommend putting your camera in manual exposure mode which allows DCC to change exposure and white balance settings from the computer side. You can also flip the image and monitor your battery life on it. Pretty neat. Part 4. Nikon DG Cam Control Virtual Webcam Beta works great on most Nikon DSLRs that have live view ability. After installation, plug in your camera, launch the software, and click Start Live View. At this point, DCC Virtual Camera becomes an available webcam to you in video software. 
Again, I recommend manual exposure mode to allow DCC controlling your exposure, and all the goodies such as image flip and battery status are still functional. Next, the Nikon Z mirrorless camera line. At this moment, DCC virtual webcam cannot launch the live view function on these cameras properly yet, but I think the developers should be able to fix it soon since the full DigiCam control software does allow live view on Z cameras. So, until DCC virtual webcam gets updated with full compatibility on the Nikon Z line, the best option for them is to use a full regular version of DigiCam control and OBS, an OBS virtual cam plugin to capture the window. After installation of the two software and the virtual cam plugin, plug in your camera, launch DCC full version, go into setting and disable focus rectangle and the focus distance slider. Then launch OBS, add the source, window capture, and then choose the cam control EXE Live View Z6 to be the target window, and then click OK. You can also hold the Alt key and use your mouse to drag the window capture area to fine tune the area you actually want. Next, click Tools, Virtual Cam, start and close the dialog. Now, OBS camera should appear as an available camera source in your video software. Part 5 Panasonic. Panasonic released their own Lumix Tether for streaming software not too long ago, which supports the G9, GH5, GH5S, and the S1 family. However, this software is only a Tether control software without the ability to emulate a webcam. In other words, open broadcaster software and OBS virtual cam plugin are still needed to capture the window and emulate a webcam on its behalf. And for some reason, you have to type in your camera's serial number to be able to download the software from Panasonic's site. After installation of everything, plug in your camera, launch Lumix Tether for streaming. Once you're in the Lumix Tether software, do make sure to change your quality from standard to fine. And then go to the corner, find this little square, click on it. This will hide the focus box. Adjust camera settings as needed, then launch OBS. Add a source, window capture, then choose the Lumix Tether EXE Live View to be the target window, and then click OK. You can also hold the Alt key and use your mouse to drag the window capture area to fine tune the area you actually want. Next, click Tools, Virtual Cam, start and close the dialog. Now, OBS camera should appear as an available camera source in your video software. Unfortunately, Earlier Panasonic cameras such as the GH4 doesn't even have the ability to use Tether. So there's no video feed through USB at all, and I don't have a solution for them yet. Sorry. Part 6. Sony. Sony has made a few different series of cameras in the past with very different hardware and software structures that your mileage may vary a lot. Newer Sony cameras such as the A6300 and later the A7 Mark II series and later are compatible with Sony's own Imaging Edge desktop software that allow you to capture control and remotely change settings on your camera with a live view. This software cannot emulate a webcam on its own, thus OBS and OBS Virtual Cam plugin are still necessary to capture the live view window to mimic a webcam. Now, since I don't own any Sony camera that's compatible with Imaging Edge, with the live view functionality, I'll have to head to our local camera shop, Vistech, asking for some help. All right, we are now at the local camera shop, Vistech Edmonton. Just going to put some protection on, and we're going inside for the final testing. To start, Change your Sony camera USB connection mode to PC remote. After installation of everything, plug in your camera, launch Imaging Edge, install remote, and then start a remote tether. Adjust camera settings as needed, then launch OBS, add a source, window capture, 
then choose the remote.exe remote to be the target window. Then click OK. You can also hold the Alt key and use your mouse to drag the window capture area to fine tune the area you actually want. Next, click Tools, Virtual Cam, Start and close the dialog. Now, OBS camera should appear as an available camera source in your video software. Another thing to note is for older cameras such as the A6000 and A5000, unfortunately, they don't support live view feed through USB at all, although they support wireless control if you use Digicam Control and the Sony Play Memory app, remote app. The issue is the camera has to be the host and the computer has to be the client. In this way, the computer will lose its internet connection, which makes the entire uh, webcam scene totally impractical. Part 7. Fujifilm Fujifilm recently announced their Fujifilm X webcam software that is compatible with X-T2, T3, X-Pro2, and the later models. Actually, today, they also announced newer firmwares for their X-A7 and X-T200 to make the compatible list even longer. Do make sure your Fujifilm camera has the newest firmware and in the USB connection mode, change it to USB Auto Tethering. On the X-A7 and the X-T200, change it to Webcam mode. It works similar to the Canon EOS webcam utility, both of which do not have an interface for controls and it simply emulates a webcam called Fujifilm X webcam. Do make sure you change all your exposure settings and camera settings before you get everything connected. At this point, Fujifilm X webcam becomes an available camera to you in video software. I would also like to mention Olympus here, since I was really trying to get it to work, but unfortunately failed at the last moment. Olympus does have their own software called Capture, which allows tether shooting and live video on their EM5 Mark II and EM1 Mark II and similar cameras. And I did successfully establish the live view and the control. For some reason, OBS is only able to see the main control window, not the live view window, regardless how I tried. So as a result, unfortunately, I don't have a solution for Olympus here. I did find a YouTube video where someone was using a third-party software called Camera Control written by Andrea Rebs. And this software allows Wi-Fi control and the live view of Olympus OiShare enabled cameras. And then he used OBS to capture the window. I decided not to try or cover this method since it's not really practical in my opinion. Ooh, that is a lot of information. I hope it has been helpful and sorry for not only every camera model and their corresponding shirt. Overall, I think Canon's, Nikon DSRs, and the newer Fujifilm models are the easiest to set up because they only require one software to be installed and they don't need any window capture, OBS, or anything like that. Nikon Z cameras, newer model Sony cameras, as well as Panasonic newer models, they are still okay to use with the help of OBS and the window capture. Special thanks to VStack Edmonton for allowing me to use their store space and display models to complete my project. And lastly, big thanks to all the developers behind all these amazing softwares, either that's Digicam Control or OBS or all the manufacturers who brought all these possibilities available to us users. We truly appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Bye.